One of the big challenges that I face when I'm doing a data analysis is figuring out where to do the heavy lifting. Sure, there's a lot of steps in an R pipeline that are run really quickly and they, they don't take much effort at all to run. There's other parts that might take hours, maybe days uh, to run. Those are things that we don't wanna run many times, right? So if something's really quick, I can run that 100 times and not think much of it. But if it's something that is a beast of an analysis step, I don't wanna run that a lot of times. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk about that. How do we divide our efforts? How do we divide our code to handle heavy lifting and then lighter lifting tasks when it comes to preparing our markdown documents? Hey folks, I'm Pat Schloss and this is Code Club. In each episode of Code Club, I try to apply principles of reproducible research to an interesting biological question. Over the course of the past 50 or so episodes, we've been looking at the sensitivity and specificity of Amplicon sequence variants, ASVs, and operational taxonomic units, or OTUs. A few weeks ago, we were working through doing an exploratory data analysis with our markdown documents. Well, now we're writing up our manuscript and trying to take code that we had in those exploratory R Markdown documents and put them into our, our Markdown document to prepare this manuscript. But <laughs> there were a few steps in those exploratory data analyses that took a long time to run. Uh, in fact, they took so long that we only did one rep of it instead of doing, say, 100 iterations. To proceed with preparing the manuscript, we need to go back and do that heavy lifting. The question, though, is, do we put that heavy lifting, those steps that might take an hour to run, inside of the R Markdown document, or do we write that in a script outside of R Markdown to create a file that we can then read into R Markdown for doing our summary statistics or into another script that we can then use to generate figures? I like to do all my heavy lifting in a script outside of R Markdown. I really like to minimize the amount of data processing that hap happens in the R Markdown document. To me, the R Markdown document is about presentation. And so if I need to say bold a word or italicize a word or create a section heading or insert a line break or page break, um, I want to be able to generate that pretty quickly, right? Um, I want to focus on the formatting, not on the compute. The compute I'm going to do outside of that R Markdown document so that when I render the document, it renders rather quickly and I can really focus on uh, the formatting uh, the text, the you know what I'm writing, correcting my silly typos and things like that. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to a earlier set of exploratory data, exploratory data analyses and create R scripts that will do those analyses, generate output files, and then we'll see how we can bring that into our R Markdown document to finish off that results section uh, that we've been working on in the past few episodes. So we will come to our project root directory and. Uh, you'll see we're green, we're all good to go, uh, and we will open up our RStudio project file, setting us up in our project root directory here in RStudio as our working directory, and we are in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and create a new R script file, and uh, to remind you, I'm going to come back to my GitHub repository, and if I look at the exploratory directory, um, the last couple that we did, or three, so there's threshold to drop NASVs, not quite sure what that title meant, uh, and then lumping and splitting, um, have the code that we need to populate the values in that middle paragraph. So let me uh, remind us what that looked like. What is, what is in that middle paragraph? So if I come to uh, submission, manuscript.rmd, um, Hopefully the scrolling doesn't give you headaches. There's this middle middle paragraph here, right? Where one of the questions we wanna know is what threshold would we need to only have one ASV or one OTU per um, species um, or per genome in that species? Um, another was if we use that level of resolution, that threshold, then how many, of, how many species would share an ASV or OTU across those species? And so this, let me look at the MD so we can see the, the figures embedded in here. Um, that here for a variety of copy numbers and the different thresholds that were used and each region, um, you know, how many um, ASVs did we see for 95% confidence um, level, right? So if we look at 95% of the genomes that have seven ASVs or seven copies of the 16S gene, 
how many ASVs or OTUs would we see? And so that would kind of be like right around here, right? I guess that'd be seven and a half here, it'd be about seven. And so we can see that um, the V19 region to get down here, you would need something on the order of about 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, right? Um, and actually in this analysis, we did this where we looked at a threshold, we looked at four copies, um, and we then looked at the number of ASVs per species that we would see uh, for different thresholds of defining an OTU, okay? So this is the information that we need to write into a script to output a big data file that we can then use to parse, to populate that paragraph, as well as to make our own figures. So we have a lot of work to do today. So I'm gonna start with this second question and come back up to the top of here and I'm gonna shamelessly steal my own code and copy that into my um, R script. And I'm gonna get rid of the here and knitter package calls. I don't need those. Um, and I'll re remove the here as well. I'm writing these paths relative to the project root directory. Um, and so I don't need the here for that within an R script. Um, and I, I accidentally <laughs> I hit the save. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into code um, and I will call it get uh, threshold for single OTU dot R. All right. And so I can then look uh, in here if I go to code. Um, so get, uh, for some reason, I put it in the project root directory rather than um, in the code directory. I must have forgotten to. Touch that. So I'm going to go ahead and manually move that um, to my code directory. And so now if I look, ah, where'd you go? Um, code and let's see, get threshold for single OTUR. We're in good shape. So we'll save that. So you'll recall that previously we pulled one genome from each species. I want to do that again, but I want to do it a hundred times so I can look at the variation that's caused by picking. Um, uh, across you know many iterations of doing that because it's a random process. We've got our set seed there as well. Um, I'm gonna stop calling these EASVs and call them ASVs for now. Um, and I'm also going to move this mutate line up um, to mutate the threshold line. So if it says threshold ESV, I want that to be zero. Um, and if I run these lines, ah, I need to, on everything. Uh, it's complaining that, yes, that should be EASV, not, okay. Run that. And so we've got, takes us a second to read in. So we can look at metadata and then as, and so that's our genome ID and species. And then we can also look at ASV and this gives us um, the ASV name, the genome, the count, the region, and the threshold that was used to define um, that ASV or OTU. This other stuff, I'm ultimately gonna bake into a function. And what I can do is I'm going to uh, work up to building a function. So I will take, um, let's see, I'm gonna take the metadata and we will group that um, by species and then we'll use slice sample to get one genome per species and so if we look at this, we see we get 4,774 um, different species um, as well as genome IDs. And then I can then pipe that into an inner join. I've got an extra sign there. Um, and so then I can replace that metadata with a period. And this then will um, combine it all together. So we get um, genome ID, species, the EASV, and there's multiple EASVs, ASVs per genome, uh, but it's also partitioned out by region and the threshold that we use to define the ASV or the OTU. Good. So like, for example, here, we've got two ASVs um, from this uh, Catharanthus roseus uh, species and genome. Okay. Very good. So if we then return back to what we had done over here, um, we again had that metadata ESV. We grouped by all these things, grouped by region threshold genome ID. 
uh, to summarize the number of RNs, the um, number of ASVs, we dropped that, um, and then we got, we grouped by the region threshold and the number of copies, and then got the quantile. And the quantile, oh, I put this in the wrong space, uh, the quantile, uh, and for now I'm gonna remove these comments, be sure to add my pipes. Uh, the quantile told us um, the 95th percentile, at the 95th percentile, how many ASVs or OTUs were there? And again, uh, this takes a couple seconds to run. And so again, this is kind of the heavy lifting, right? If I had to do this 100 times inside of my R Markdown document, that'd be really painful. And so what we can see is that we've got a region, we've got threshold, we've got the number of RRNs, and then the upper bound. Um, and the upper bound um, is the number of ASVs that we saw for a 95th percentile, okay? Um, yeah, so again, at a zero threshold, we've got that. Um, and again, I can uh, do a, a kind of a hack here that I normally do when I'm building out the code, which is to do something like x equals period capital last value. And so last value is the last thing that was outputted. So again, I look at x, I get that. But I could do x uh, and pipe that to filter. And I can do threshold uh, equals, equals say, 0 0.03. Um, or let me instead do um, nrns equals equals 7. And look at that. And so what I want to know is, what is the threshold where I get 1 back? Right, and so another way of thinking about that um, would be to do um, filter um, upper bound equals equals one, and so now looking at this, I see for v19 um, that uh, for these thresholds, what am I doing? Yeah, so for x, I've got this. And if I look at upper bound of one, um, this then shows me um, how many I have, right? And so here's a case where, um, and I probably want to do this by uh, the number of copies. So let me do, um, yeah, that's good. And we can then say, let's group by um, n RNs and n by region, region, NRNs, uh, that, and then we can do summarize, um, let's say threshold equals, we'll do min threshold, because that will give us the minimum threshold to get one ASV or OTU per copy number that we have here, right? And so if we're looking at full length sequences and there are seven copies in the genome, then we would want a 5.5% threshold, right? Good. And we can then, of course, do dot groups equals drop to get rid of that, that grouping. And I can continue this pipeline that I had up above without using the X um, there as well. And then this will output all this information for all, of, all four of my regions and all thresholds that I'm interested in. And yeah, so let's call this a function, and we will call this get um, what as threshold for a single OTU. Yep, and function. And what I'll do is I'm going to create an argument for called prob, and the default will be 0.95. Um, and I can then change this 0.95 to be prob. So if I decide later that I'd rather do, say, 90% or 80%, I can change it there. Um, I think in the text of the manuscript, I said 90 percentile. But I think 95th percentile is probably a bit more robust. So we'll save that. And what we could do, of course, is we could then say map DFR. And let's test it out with three reps. And we could then do uh, tilde get threshold for single OTU, and we'll output that. And this we will then say, um, 
thresholds for single OTU and pipe that out. Um, so let's give this a run. I think each time we run get threshold for single OTU um, takes maybe half a minute or so. I'm going to test it by doing system dot time on that function and let's see how long it takes to run. Ah, it's complaining. Could not find function get threshold. Oh, maybe I did I forget to do that? Get threshold for single OTU. Yeah, let's give this another shot. All right, so that took about 30 seconds or so to go. That was actually much faster than I thought. Um, if I look at thresholds for a single OTU, um, let me do filter um, n r end equals equals seven. Um, give that a shot. And so what we see is that I've got v19 in here three times. Um, so I could say do an arrange by region. So it kind of sorts it by the region column there. And I see that um, I've got pretty similar thresholds. Uh, the V4 bops around a little bit. And so again, that's the value of, you know, eventually doing this 100 times. Um, and so what we can do is um, I can do that and we can then, um, I'm going to, uh, for now, I'm going to take off that system time and pipe this. And I will do a group by, um, what did I say, region and NRNs. And I'll do a summarize. And I can say um, threshold equals mean um, threshold. And I will, I'm going to do a median. And I'll do IQR um, threshold. Or let's just do IQR. Um, and that'll be the IQR on the interquartile range on the threshold. And again, if we run this, it'll take like half a minute and we'll see that we get the right output. And then we can scale up to say doing it a hundred times. Okay, so that went quick. Um, of course, I forgot the dot groups here to get rid of that. Uh, but let's look at thresholds, single OTU. You see the IQR is very small. Again, it is for only um, three iterations, so it's it's going to be pretty small. Um, so something else that I would like to have in here is the number of genomes. So perhaps, um, let's say, threshold, min threshold. Um, I'll also do um, n genomes, and that will be the n function. And also here then, uh, where I summarize the output, maybe I could also say uh, n, and I'll, I'll say median n genomes. Okay, so good. Um, so if this takes 30 seconds to run, um, 30, so if it's like 10 seconds per iteration, and I'm going to do 100 iterations, it's 1,000 seconds divided by... Uh, 60 seconds per minute. It's going to take about 16 minutes to run. Um, let's see if we can't borrow some of our skills from um, from the the uh, future package for uh, to speed up this map DFR step. Um, but you might recall from the episode where I talked about building those rock curves that our studio does not like the future or fur package. So we need to be able to run this um, from the command line. And so I'm going to put in the shebang line here, uh, which um, you'll recall is the this line up here, <laughs> which tells it tells Bash to run this script using uh, the vanilla R script. And I need to make some other modifications, but because I use this function so rarely, um, I need to borrow from my git rock um, uh, data script. And so, of course, I had library fur, which I have here. And then also there was some setup stuff that I needed to do down further, uh, which was to plan multi-core. So I'm going to put this here. So plan multi-core. And the other thing I remembered that I needed to do was to set options, the fur options, to put in the seed. And I can do that um, here. So we'll do map DFR. Um, and then I can put in my options, fur. 
options, 1976, that all looks good. Um, and I can maybe put this all on separate lines so it's easier to see on the screen. All right, so that's good. And I need to remove the set seed from up here. So I'll save that and I will come back to my terminal and I will chmod that to be executable. So code um, was get threshold, yeah. And then I can do code get threshold for single OTU. And let's see how long this takes. Um, hopefully it's quick. All right, so that went, but I realized I didn't give it any output. <laughs> um, so let's see. Um, so I'm actually gonna get rid of this thresholds for single OTU and I can output it to that file, right? Um, so maybe I'll bump this over a little bit so it's easier to see. And I can do write TSV and I'll do data processed. Um, and I can call this um, thresholds for single otu.tsv. Yeah. So let's give this another go and hopefully it'll go quickly here. So that took about 30 seconds to run. Um, and if I look at ls data processed um, thresholds, it's there. Uh, and let me do a nano on that actually. And so we've got our regions, our th number of copies, the threshold, the IQR, and the number of genomes that are there. Um, this does not look right. Um, the number of genomes is clearly not right. Let's go back to our studio and double check what we are doing here. Um, and so I, where did I get the number of genomes? Uh, so I calculate the number of genomes here. This, this is probably actually the number of thresholds that had a value of one in the upper bound. That wasn't what I wanted. Um, I probably want that instead uh, to be calculated up here where I did upper bound. Uh, so, oops, let's do n genomes equals n function uh, with that. And again, we can put these on separate lines so it's it doesn't scroll across the right side of the screen. And here then we can also do summarize, um, uh, let's see. Um, let's do n genomes equals um, median n genomes. They, they should all be the same value, uh, but we'll run that. And then let's do get threshold for single OTU and let's see what the output looks like. As always, there's a little bit of uh, fits and starts in getting this all going. Okay, so we see the number of genomes on here as well, so we're in good shape. And I think this will be good. Um, oh, I forgot to do my uh, map DFR. Uh, again, if we look at a rock data, that this should have been future map DFR. Okay, so let's give that a shot. I'm going to set this to be 100, and we'll give that a shot here. Let me rerun this, fire that up, and we should be in good shape. While this is running, what I'd like to do is I'm going to create another tab um, and open up um, my my project in Atom here. Is here in Atom, I'm going to go ahead and add the rule to my make file uh, to build that uh, file. Um, and let me look at data process to remind myself what I called it. Um, and if we come down, um, yeah, we can say here data forward slash processed uh, forward slash get threshold for single OTU dot R. Um, and that is going to be dependent on code forward slash uh, get threshold for single OTU dot R. And also it is dependent on a couple files. So this genome ID taxonomy um, as well as uh, the count tibble that we've used for so long now. Uh, and we can then fire that up by using our um, special variable, the dollar sign caret. And I can then, um, oh, I don't want dot r, I want dot tsv. Um, and it's not get threshold, it is thresholds for single otu dot tsv. And I spelled the single wrong. Ah, so threshold thresholds for single otu.tsv. 
So we'll save that. And we're going to have to um, come back to this and uh, fix our typo here. Uh, and so we'll have to rerun this um, to get this to work. But that can also then be a dependency for um, this file uh, for building our uh, PDF and our Word file of our manuscript. So we'll save that. And um, that ran. It took, I think, just a few minutes. So I'm going to test this out with make, um, uh, what was it? Um, data processed um, thresholds for single otu.tsv. And that needs to be an E. Um, so we'll run that. That might take another couple moments. Um, and in the meantime, I will go ahead and remove uh, data processed um, threshold for s without the E, uh, and we'll be in good shape. And again, if you look at top, one of the nice thing about the Future app is that you can see all 16 processes running on my computer. Uh, they're not at 100% because the software that I use to, to capture what's going on on my screen is called ScreenFlow, and that uses some amount of CPU as well. Um, and so uh, it's not running as fast as it would if I had nothing else running on my computer, but it's still faster than only having um, one CPU going to it at a time. But this will take a moment or two, um, and then we'll be in good shape. So let's come to our studio, and we can then return to our manuscript. And right in here, we need to go ahead and put in a code chunk so we can fill in these X values that I put in as, as holders. So we can do the uh, back, 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 R, uh, and then close it with three back ticks. And remember, we don't need to say echo equals false, because in the last episode, uh, be sure you check out the last episode, I showed you how we could set echo to false for all of our code chunks. And so I will put in here a argument, um, a variable called threshold, threshold, and it'll be read TSV, and it'll be data, or I mean to do here, right? Uh, data forward slash processed, forward slash, um, and let's see if it's done yet. Not quite, but um, I'll go ahead and copy and paste that in. And we will wait and see <laughs> what the data looks like. Um, once this finishes, it should just be another moment or two. Great, so that finished running. We can come back to our RStudio uh, session. And remember that we can run all of the previous code chunks by hitting this icon here, which has got the down arrow going to the horizontal line run all that it might take it a minute moment um, good and we can then look at read tsv here and so that all looks good and something that we now want to do is to insert values from that data frame into the text and so what we're what we've got here is we're talking about the propensity uh, to lump species together as well as split things apart um, so maybe I'll say to split species, to split a genome apart, to split a genome um, into separate, uh, yeah, apart, or to lump species together. Okay. Um, I identify the threshold where ninety-five percent of bacterial species would be represented by a single OTU. Uh, for the full length 16S, I found that a, th a threshold of whatever, 95% um, of the species would be represented by a single OTU. So I feel like I'm repeating myself here, right? So let's get rid of that because it was kind of redundant. Um, for a full length, I found that a threshold of whatever, 95% of the species would be represented by a single OTU. Similarly, blah, 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 blah. Good. Okay. So what I want to do, though, is because we really have the data for many numbers of copies. And so what I'd rather do is to correct that typo, <laughs> but I'd also like to um, indicate a number of operons per genome or per species. Um, maybe I'll say for full length 16S sequences, um, I found that um, of the species with, let's say, seven copies of the RN operon would be represented by a single OTU. So we can constrain it, 
And you know what? Maybe we'll use that data in a figure. And so then we can then point them to a figure. But I'm not worrying about figures right now. Um, I'm worried about getting these values in, right? So if we look at thresholds, um, we can then let's filter that uh, to say um, uh, R, not n r n equals equals seven. And now if I look at thresholds, I get these uh, four values for the four regions, and I'm interested in that threshold value. You can see the IQRs were very tight, um, not much difference there. And so I can say threshold uh, v19 is thresholds, and I'll do filter uh, region equals equals uh, v19, and I will then pull threshold, and I will then multiply that by 100 to get it as a percentage. We talked about that in the last episode. And so that is 5.5% as a threshold. And we can copy and paste to do V4, 3, 4, 4, 5, V4, 3, 4, 4, 5. And let's fill all those in. And again, um, I created a special function to format those in the last episode. Um, which is down below here, uh, or I called it down below, which was uh, format PCT uh, this. Okay, and so let's come up here and insert those values. Um, and we can put that here. And again, that's threshold instead of balance. Threshold v19. Um, let me get the whole inline code chunk. And so this needs to be v4, uh, 3, 4, and 4, 5. And I'll add a respectively here. Oh, I got to spell it right. Good. So we've got that information inserted. Um, there is still this percentage that I want to come back to probably in the next episode to finish off our results section. Uh, so let's go ahead and make our submission manuscript PDF. Make sure those values get inserted into the document. But what you'll notice, again, going back to that issue of heavy lifting, is that that heavy lifting that took a couple minutes to run to generate my thresholds table, um, uh, you would be slowing this down even more. Um, and instead, what we can focus on in the manuscript is writing the manuscript and inserting the values into the manuscript rather than uh, worrying about the heavy lifting of the, the computes. So we'll open this up. Let me make this a bit bigger so you can see it more easily. And we'll come down to that. Ah, there's some output here that I need to get rid of. Um, but you can see that I've got my 2.5%, and 3.5%. Very good. And I need to now silence uh, these column specifications. And we can do that uh, pretty easily. Again, if we come back up here, um, and I can get a sense of what the specifications were because it outputs it to the screen here. And I can add, oh, that doesn't need to be a period, it needs to be a comma. Call types equals calls. And I will say, um, really it's region that needs to be call character. Everything else could be call double. So I will say region equals call character. And we then need dot default equals call double. And do I have all my parentheses? No, one more there. And that should get rid of it for me. And again, because I have a make file, I can just make stuff, right? And it's, it's very easy to re-render it for me. Um, and then I can look at the output here in the PDF once this is completed. And if we scroll back down, I think we were there already before I moved it. We now see that that is gone, right? That code chunk where it told us the column specifications is gone. Um, and we now have uh, the nice formatting of the thresholds to get one OTU per species. Uh, the flip side we'll talk about in the next episode is this percentage of the percentage of species that shared a ASV or shared a 16S sequence uh, between them. So we'll talk about that in the next episode. So in conclusion, one thing I would highlight for you um, is that again, if we um, 
let me for a moment remove the submission manuscript.pdf and build this again. And as this flows through, you'll notice that it kind of slows down in different spots. And depending on like how much you're in a rush and how much you're kind of uh, primping and editing your document, those pauses up here in those previous code chunks um, may annoy you, right? You may want to speed those up. Uh, and so it's a trade-off, right? So there's obvious things like the compute that we did today that took a couple minutes to run. You don't want to sit and wait for that to run as you're worried about kind of removing, you know, outputting code chunks and things like what we just did. Um, whether you're willing to wait five seconds for it to get through a step, eh, that's up to you ultimately. And so there is a trade-off between how much compute you do within the R Markdown document versus putting that into a script that is outside of the document. One of the other nice things about putting it in a script outside of the document is that now I've got that file and I can use that in another R script to build a figure to show the data. And so again, that's the value also of doing those big computes outside of the R Markdown is that the data become available for other applications. All right, so um, a lot of review today, but I think it's useful to see that review in a different context with a different application as we saw today. In the next episode, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about redoing those computes for lumping and splitting. And because that's going to be heavy lifting, we'll also put that into a separate R script. Well, thanks again for spending some time with me to watch this project unfold. We're getting to the end. Um, trust me on that. Uh, I really appreciate the time that you spend. I know you all are busy and you have a lot of other stuff going, and I hope you get something out of this. If you do, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you're thinking about it. Um, what questions do you have? I'd love to answer those in another episode. Of course, please tell your friends about uh, these Code Club episodes, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.